Lady Smith. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Undetected and untreated mental health challenges can lead to grave consequences. A bad day can become a bad week, a bad month, and then a broken life. Absenteeism, job losses, dropping out of school, family breakdown, drug addiction, homelessness, violent behavior, and suicide are all strongly linked to mental health. How much suffering could we prevent if we recognize the real value of early intervention in mental health problems? The downstream effects of poor mental health have heavy social costs associated with them that affect both families and communities. Loss of business due to employee absenteeism, loss of tax revenue, classroom disruptions, loss of customers due to unsafe streets, increased policing costs, ambulance call-outs, emergency room visits, and the list goes on. These costs are borne by all of us, and they leave us with fewer resources to put towards other important priorities. Julie Chadwick recently wrote a three-part series that highlighted the fact that Nanaimo's homelessness crisis is a mental health crisis. During a point in time count in Nanaimo earlier this year, 60% of individuals experiencing homelessness self-reported ongoing mental health issues. Mental health services in Nanaimo Ladysmith as well as in communities all across Canada are under-resourced and underfunded. When institutions like Riverview Hospital in Vancouver were shut down in the 1980s, there was no plan in place to care for people with complex mental health issues. There is still no plan in place, and the ramifications of the lack of planning and lack of action are being lived out on the streets of our communities. The amount of suffering is enormous. We need housing with wraparound services for individuals with complex mental health needs. These people are among the most vulnerable in our society, and they need specialized care and protection to stabilize their lives. In addition, more accessible treatment facilities are needed for people who have self-medicated with alcohol and drugs to, relie to relieve mental health issues and are now suffering from substance abuse disorders. It is far easier to help someone going through a rough patch in life than it is to try to help someone whose life has fallen apart. Helping people in the early stages of mental health challenges begins with eliminating the stigma. Men, in particular, suffer from fear and shame and even guilt associated with asking for help. We need to make mental health care accessible. As the Minister of Health pointed out, mental health support is available to all Canada, Canadians, free of charge through the Wellness Together portal. I acknowledge the government's efforts in providing this service to Canadians in response to the COVID crisis. Unfortunately, it is not accessible to everyone, and it is not enough. The service offered through the Wellness Together portal requires internet access. They require the ability to navigate to different websites and register for different services. And online counseling requires privacy. These are circumstances and abilities that most of us take for granted. But when we pause and think about it, we understand that many people in Canada are left out. The Wellness Together portal does not replace the need to fully cover mental health care services in the Canada Health Act and it cannot replace the need for an ongoing relationship with a professional when a person is experiencing mental health challenges. Canada needs to invest in early detection and treatment of mental health problems from our education system throughout our society. Fully including mental health care in the Canada Health Act is the right thing to do, and now is the right moment to act. Thank you. The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Health. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker, and I want to thank the Honourable Member for the question and his care and concern on this very important topic. I want to thank the Member for giving me the opportunity to speak about mental health and how we are supporting Canadians during this very difficult time. You know, prior to COVID-19, mental health was a significant concern, with one in three Canadians experiencing mental illness or problematic substance use during their lifetime. Madam Speaker, our government recognizes the seriousness of this problem and has taken a comprehensive approach to mental health. In Budget 2017, we provided $5 billion over 10 years to provinces and territories mm -hmm. to improve Canadians' access to mental health services. Through these investments, jurisdictions have expanded access to community-based services for children and youth, provided integrated health and mental, service, mental health services for people with complex needs, and spread proven models of community mental health care and culturally appropriate interventions. 
We recognize that COVID-19 has created stress and anxiety for many, particularly for those who do not have ready access to their regular support networks or have a pre-existing mental health condition. In April of 2020, a survey conducted by Mental Health Research Canada showed self-reported levels had quadrupled for high anxiety and doubled for depression compared to pre-pandemic. In addition, significantly fewer Canadians have been able to access in-person mental health supports since the start of this pandemic. And the positive impacts of various social supports and other coping mechanisms have diminished considerably. In response, our government took quick action to address the immediate mental health needs of Canadians and to alleviate some of the burden on provinces and territories. We launched Wellness Together Canada on April 15th, offering a broad range of free mental health and substance use supports in both official languages to all Canadians on a 24-7 basis. These supports include access to peer support networks, social workers, psychologists, and other professionals for confidential chat sessions, phone calls, counseling. In addition, Wellness Together Canada features a dedicated text line for healthcare workers and frontline personnel. As of October 27th, over 530,000 individuals, all in provinces and territories, have accessed Wellness Together in over 1.5 million distinct web sessions. We've provided $7.5 million in funding to Kids Help Phone to provide young people with mental health support during the pandemic. Since the start of this pandemic, they've experienced a significant surge in demand and are projecting to reach at least 3 million young people in 2020 in comparison to just 1.9 million in 2019. Madam Speaker, in July, $500 million of additional support was provided to provinces and territories for immediate mental health and substance service needs as part of the $19 billion Safe Restart Agreement. These initiatives taken, collect taken collectively provide a comprehensive response to address mental health needs arising from the pandemic and lay the groundwork for longer term improvement. Madam Speaker, we recognize that there's more to do and that mental health of Canadians will continue to be impacted by the pandemic over the coming years. As stated in the Minister of Health's mandate letter, in the 2020 speech from the throne, the federal government is committed to doing even more to improve access to mental health resources. This includes the development of an, and implementation of national standards to improve access to timely, high quality mental health services across Canada. Improving access to mental health services will require the combined efforts of all levels of government and many stakeholders. Our government will work closely with provinces and territories to develop access standards that are evidence-based and consistent with the level of services Canadians expect and deserve. Canadians have made it clear that they expect more from their health care system, and that is why... Full member for Nanaimo Ladysmith. I'm sorry. <laughs> thank you, Madam Speaker, and I'd like to thank the Honourable Parliamentary Secretary for his response. The COVID-19 crisis created anxiety and negatively impacted the mental health of many Canadians. And swift and bold action by this government helped ease the worst of that anxiety and gave people hope that help was available. Too many young Canadians today are suffering from severe climate anxiety. The climate emergency is draining away their hopes for, of the future. And swift and bold government action is needed to combat climate change and the anxiety and despair it creates. COVID-19, climate anxiety, financial and work stress, loneliness and alienation, these are a few of the causes of the mental health crisis, which can hit any one of us and affect all of us. We need to help people before their lives fall apart. Fully including mental health care under the Canada Health Act is the bold action needed to address this crisis. Thank you. Honourable Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Health. Thank you, Madam Speaker, and I want to thank the member for the kind words and, and the acknowledgement that the work that our government is do, has done and is continuing to do. Uh, Madam Speaker, our government is committed to increasing the availability of high-quality mental health services. Wellness Together Canada does provide Canadians access to needed mental health supports, including tailored content and approaches for vulnerable populations. We are promoting Wellness Together through targeted social media and communications campaigns. And Madam Speaker, we will continue to work with the Wellness Together Consortium to make improvements 
to this more this very important mental health resource. I look forward to further continued collaboration with the provinces, territories, and other stakeholders to improve the quality and accessibility of mental health services and supports for all Canadians. And Madam Speaker, I thank the member for his continued collaboration uh, in, on this very important topic. Thank you, Madam Speaker. The Honourable Member.